All right, welcome to another tutorial slash demonstration. Uh, this one is going to be a two-parter. So this first part, we are going to design a custom piece of IP that we can hook onto the Avalon bus. The Avalon bus is the bus that is used by the NIOS 2 soft core processor. So we're going to design our own custom peripheral that will work on that bus. And then in part two, we'll actually build a NIOS 2 soft core processor and use that custom IP piece for um, controlling the LEDs on the DE10 standard board. So like always, we'll start by firing up Cordis and we'll do a new project wizard. We're gonna go stick this on our D drive and our video demo. And we're going to say new folder uh, NIOS custom IP1. And then I'm going to create another new folder inside of here. And I'm just going to call it custom IP. And that's where we'll start. We're going to create that custom IP first. So we'll just hit Control C, Control V, uh, blah, blah. We are a 5 CSX FC6 D6 F31 C6. And we want Questa. And we can go ahead and hit finish. All right, now that our project's created, we'll create a new uh, Verilog file. And we're just going to. Do a module custom IP and module, and we'll go ahead and save that as our custom IP. So we're going to need a number of signals. Um, I could probably get away with bringing in one bit of the address bus, but I'm going to bring in two bits. So we'll call it address. Now, if you name these signals the same thing, same names as the Avalon bus, it makes your life a lot easier when it comes to actually implementing things. So we're going to do that. So we're going to name this next one chip select. Then we've got a clock. Um, we've got a read. Um, we've got a reset active low. Um, we've got a write signal those are all inputs oh we got one more input um, we've got a 32-bit uh, write data then we've got a couple outputs that we're going to use I need an output to control the LEDs so we'll call that LED underscore out oops I forgot to put a comma right there and then I need my um, we have the right data bus. I also need one for read data, which is the opposite direction. So that one is an output. So that uh, is all of my signals. I'm also going to need a reg that is 10 bits to hold my value. And we're just going to call that data. And then we're pretty much good to go. I need an always block. So always at... Let's start with a pause edge of the clock or a neg edge of reset in. Uh, begin and an end. All right, so let's take care of the reset first. If reset underscore in is a low. Then we got to do a couple things. First things first, data is going to get set back to a, um, that's 10 bits, of zero. And our read data will also get um, 32 bits of zero. Um, so there we go, right? So that's our if. Now we need to take care of our next few situations. We have an else if. 
So if we get a chip select and a write signal and the address is equal to a zero, um, then we're going to want to do some things. That means that we have a valid write, so we're going to be writing data into this PIO core. So what that means is my data needs to get write data uh, 9 to 0. And we'll ignore the high end for now. And we should probably also clear our read data, 32B0. All right, the next situation is if we get a chip select and a read and our address is equal to a zero. Um, by the way, address equal to zero means you're write, reading and writing register zero of this custom core. So we're only implementing a single address. That's why I only needed to bring in a couple bits. Um, begin and um, if that's the case, then read data is going to get data and data will get data will hold state right and then lastly our else um, read data is going to go to a 32b0 and our data will get data so our stuff will hold now, outside of this, we also need to do a continuous assignment, some combinational logic. So we'll assign our LED out to our data. And that should be our custom IP. Now we need to uh, test this. So we'll do a uh, quick compile, the analysis and elaboration. And like always, um, I made a bonehead mistake. Um, combinational logic, a constant assigned statement. We can't use non-blocking. We have to use blocking assignments. So let's go ahead and save that and recompile. And I forgot one more thing. <laughs> read data has to be a wretch. <laughs> all right, there we go. We actually got it all compiled. We can take a look at our RTL here. And that's about what I would expect, right? We've got a register for the read data. We've got a register for the write data. The write data is coming into that reg. That feeds the LED out. That comes back around to the logic that's controlling the read data line. And everything else looks pretty good. So next step is we need to write a test bench for this. So we'll do a new Verilog file. And we will start writing our test bench. So we'll come up here, we'll do our time scale. Uh, we'll do one nanosecond over one picosecond. And then we'll do a module and we'll just call it test bench. And then um, the real easy way to remember this is if you go back here, any input becomes a register, any output becomes a wire in your test bench. Um, so I've already filled those out. I'm just going to copy them over. So there's all of my inputs and outputs right there. The next thing we have to do is we have to instantiate um, our core. We'll call it UUT1. And then we have to preserve the order. So we're going to send address, chip, select, clock, read, reset, in, write, write data, LED, out, and read data. Just double check myself. Yes, got that correct. Um, now that we've instantiated that, we need an always block to take care of the clock. That's pretty simple. 
every 10 time delays, clock is going to get tilde clock. Um, now we need to create our initial block. Uh, so initial begin, let's do an end and an end module. Um, so fairly straightforward, we need to set all of our signals to an initial value. Um, I've already done that, so I'm going to just paste that part in. So there we go. And now we can actually start our testing, right? So we initially set our reset to a low. So 15 time units later, we're going to reset in gets a one. And then let's go five time units after that. We can say that write data is going to get a 32 hex one two three four one two AA. So that is a one zero one zero one zero one zero pattern on our write data line. Um, let's wait another five, and then we'll set chip select to be a one. And let's wait, oh, let's say seven this time. We'll set the right line high. Uh, one, B1. And then let's leave that active. And then we're going to set the right data to a 32B123. Uh, 32 hex, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, we're going to set the chip select to a 1B0, and then we're going to set the right to a 1B0. Um, at 40 time units later, let's write a different pattern. So let's do write data is going to get a 32 hex, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do a one, five, five. That's the opposite pattern is zero, one, zero, one. Um, five time units after that. Um, let's do chip select is going to go to a one and then seven time units after that we'll set right to a one. We'll leave that active for 20 time units. Uh, we'll do one more of these. And hit Control C, Control V, and this time we're going to set it to be three FF. And forty units later. We're going to set our chip select high. Seven units after that, we'll set our read high. And then we'll set our chip select and our read back low. So that should be our test bench. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file, save as. And I'm going to create a new folder in here called simulation. And under simulation, I'm going to create another new folder, which we'll call model sim. That's where model sim will want everything. And we're just going to call that testbench.v. Okay, now the next step is to create a control file, a tickle file, a tickle script. So we'll do a new tickle script. I've already written this, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and just cut and paste it. But basically, we're stopping any current simulations. We're creating the work library. We're compiling all the Verilog files in the project. We're also compiling that test bench. We're starting the simulator. And then we're 
firing off a wave.do and we're going to run this for 350 nanoseconds. So I'm just going to say file, save as. I'm going to go in that simulation model sim folder and I'm going to call this testbench.tickle. And lastly, we need to create one more new file. I'm just going to create a text file and that's our wave.do. Um, I've also already written this. We'll kind of go over it, but I'm going to do it save as first. We'll put it in that same folder and I'm going to rename it wave.do for model sim. And there, here we go, right? So we're adding all of our stimuluses. We're adding our clock, our control signals, our address, chip select, reset, read and write, and then our two data buses. And then of course our outputs to the LEDs. This is just configuration of all those waveforms. And then this will, when we're done, zoom it back to 350 nanoseconds so I don't have to zoom out when we're done. So we have all of our files written. The next step is to fire up that simulator. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, Questa has fired. We'll go ahead and maximize that window. Now the nice thing about this is all I gotta do is type in do testbench.tickle. And that will compile all of my code, create the library, and run my stimulus test bench and show me the results. So we'll do that. And here we go. We're going into simulation mode now. And there's my waveform. My waveform's populated. And there we go, right? So I'm going to scoot some of these over so we're a lot easier to see. And we'll scoot this over a bit. And here we go, right? I'm going to zoom in just a hair. So here we go. There's our clock. Here's our address line. We just left it zero while we were testing. 